In this video, we'll walk you through how to use Kit to identify who your major donors are and how to build a major donor prospect list. Let's start with a bit of context to get our rhythm going. Major donors are donors with the highest monetary contributions to your organization. They're incredibly valuable as they can make up anywhere from 60 to 80% of your organization's overall funding. Major donors give major gifts, which are considered the largest donations in terms of the amount your organization receives. Exploring major donors a step further, let's look at the major donor cycle. In the top right is the first stage of the cycle, identification. This is when you identify potential major donors within your donor base. The next stage is qualification. This is when you determine how viable those prospects are. Now, KIT plays a large role within these two stages, as we do a majority of the heavy lifting when it comes to identifying and qualifying prospects. The next two stages, cultivation and solicitation, and stewardship, are when you come in. This is where you use your expert knowledge in donor solicitation and relationship building to convert prospects into major donors. Now let's jump back to stage one for a moment. Before Kit can identify major donor prospects, we need to know who would be considered a major donor, as this varies from organization to organization. While some might consider a donor who gives a $5,000 gift a major donor, others might consider a gift size of 15,000. So how does an organization determine the gift size that qualifies someone as a major donor? Let's take a look. Now keep in mind that your organization might already have a very clear idea of what amount is considered a major gift. However, if you're curious to revisit this threshold or your organization hasn't yet determined a major gift threshold, this will be helpful. I'll start with the steps and we'll look at this more visually when we dive in app a bit later. The first step is to use KITS filters to view donations from the last calendar year or fiscal year, depending on your preference. You can then use KITS column sorting feature to sort donations by the total amount, from the highest amount to the lowest amount. You'll want to make sure to exclude foundations and corporations and any outliers. For example, a donor who gave one lifetime major gift who had been clear that they will not give again. Add up the top 10 donation amounts and divide by 10 to find the average amount. Take this total and round to the nearest $5,000 amount. For example, if your average comes out to $8,500, you'll want to round to 10,000. This becomes the amount someone would have to donate to qualify as a major donor. What I'll show you in a bit is that this amount can actually be entered into Kit, so the system can filter out major donors and identify major donor prospects. Now for the exciting part. How exactly does Kit identify major donor prospects? Well, Kit passed thousands of data points from real and diversified nonprofit data through machine learning models. What these models do is look for patterns in behavior in order to determine which behaviors are the most indicative of a certain outcome. In this case, giving a major gift is the outcome. Our models found that for major donors, the top indicators for giving a major gift are average donation amount, changes in donation amounts over time, median individual income, median monthly rent, and unemployment rate. The model's results were quite impressive, as these indicators are reflective of industry research on major donor indicators. Keep in mind that these models are continuously trained with new data to improve their accuracy. Now here's the coolest part. When your data is entered into Kit, the models run on your unique data meaning we look at your existing major donors to pick up on patterns of what behaviors are most indicative of someone giving a major gift. This way, rather than making assumptions about your donor's behavior, the models are studying their behavior to produce unique indicators specifically for your organization. Your indicators might reflect the indicators you see listed here, or you might have a few different indicators. In either case, indicators are weighted, meaning the indicators found to be the most predictive of a certain donor behavior have a heavier influence on the predicted outcomes. Now with these indicators, Kit is going to produce a list of donors who have the potential to become a major donor. Those who reflect more of the indicators of giving a major gift will have a very high potential, while those who reflect less of the indicators will have a lower potential. The idea here is we give you the widest possible range of opportunities in terms of prospects. Although someone might have a low potential to become a major donor, there's still potential, right? It's up to you to decide how flexible you wanna be with your opportunity range. Do you wanna take the leap on everyone from low to high potential, or perhaps you'd rather reach out with an ask to those with very high potential and do a bit more stewardship with those on the lower end before sending an ask. In either case, Kit gives you a lot of flexibility in how you decide to narrow down your opportunities list into a more targeted list. So how exactly can Kit help you build out a targeted list? by creating segments with KITS filters. Filters are the key to turning a list of opportunities into a targeted segment. You can combine major donor potential with several other predictions, insights, and exclusions to build a list as wide or as targeted as you'd like. 
Perhaps you only want to see donors with a very high potential to become a major donor, who are ready to donate, who have given a large gift in the past, and you're also interested in seeing the best way to reach out to these donors so you can strategically solicit them. Guess what? Kit has a filter for every one of those preferences and even more to choose from to add from there. Now what we've all been waiting for, let's dive in app and evolve all of this theory and brainstorming into tangible results. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do in Kit is identify our major gift size. So we're going to go ahead and go to the gifts tool over here on the left hand side. Here we're going to see a list of all of our gifts pulling in from the CRM. The first thing we're going to do is add filters to this list. So, so I'll go ahead and press filters. And then the first filter I'm going to add is based on the date received. So when the transaction was received. I could do is relatively last year if I want to base it off the calendar year, or I could use the logic is between and enter my fiscal year dates. In this case, I'm going to use is relatively last year. The other filter we're going to want to add is for contact type. Okay, so contact type, and we want to make sure that contact type does not contain any of company, right? So that way we're removing companies and foundations who might have given a really large amount in the, in the past, but they're not reflective of individual major givers, right? So we probably don't want them in this list. So we'll go ahead and press filter. So now we have everyone who meets that criteria. Now what we're gonna do is sort by total amount. So I'll press these two arrows next to the total amount column, which is going to give me a list of gifts from the largest to um, the smallest. Now in this particular account, I have the same donor listed several times. You're not likely to see that. You'll probably see different names um, listed over here. But in either case, we wanna export this information. So I'm gonna press this little export button here, and I'm gonna export two fields. The donor's name, because that's important, and the total amount. Okay, those are the two fields we're gonna use. So you're gonna go ahead and press next and go ahead and export that information into an Excel or CSV file. Once you have that information, what you'll wanna do is find the top 10 donation amounts. All right, so what you'll wanna do is remove any donor that's listed twice. If a donor is listed more than once, only keep their highest donation. Otherwise in your top 10, if you have three the, do the same donor listed three times, it might skew your average, right? So only keep their highest donation. You'll also wanna remove any outliers. So people who gave once and they've been very clear that they're not gonna give again, you'll wanna remove those as well. Once you have your top 10 listed, you'll wanna total those up. You'll wanna divide that total by 10 and round to the nearest 5,000 mark. So in this case, I ended up with 15,000 being my major gift amount. Let's jump back into kit. So now what do I do with that information? The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head into organization settings. Under the profile tab, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and head to donor sizes, okay? If you go ahead and press edit on donor sizes, you have two options. So this, this just tells Kit how you wanna bucket each size of donor. You can do it by percentage or you can do it by monetary amount. So in this case, where we'd want to enter our major gift amount is here in the large. So in, in my case, I'd enter 15,000, and then I can see my major donor range falls between 15,000 and up. All right, so when you do this, now we're gonna be able to filter to find major donors, and when we use our predictor for major donor potential, it's going to be focused on this particular range that you've identified for yourself. All right, so now let's look at where we can find the major donor prediction. If you head to the intelligence tool, under the predictions tab, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see our major donor potential. All right, so this is going to show you a bit of a preview of everyone who has pretty high potential to become a major donor. Another place you'll be able to see this is if you jump into a contact record, each contact has their own insights and predictions. So here I can see under predictions that this particular person has a major donor potential that's very high potential, so they're pretty likely to become a major donor. So what do we do with this information and how do we build a list? So what we we'll wanna do is go to contacts and we're gonna to head to segments because we wanna build a list, right? So I'll go to segments, I'll create a new segment. And in this case, I'm looking for major donors, all right? And let's say we want them to be ready to donate. So I'll go ahead and press next and now I'm prompted to choose my filters. So let's keep this pretty simple. I'm gonna look for my major donor potential filter. All right, so major donor potential is, and let's say I only wanna focus on those very high. Now, remember I said, this is gonna show you 
major donor potential is the full range of possibilities, right? So we categorize those for you. Low potential, moderate, high. So you can really decide how flexible you want to be in terms of that range. In my case, I know I only want to reach out to people with very high potential. So I'm going to go ahead and press save. Keep that simple for now. All right, I have 1,000 contacts in here. That's too much. I know we can't reach out to that many people. So I'm gonna start breaking down this list a little bit more. And that's where that work comes in, where we're gonna to start to add filters to build a more and more and more strategic list. So maybe under filters, I have another idea. I'm gonna use another prediction. I wanna make sure that these donors have a, a certain donor readiness category. So that's another prediction that Kit populates for you. I want to make sure that their donor readiness contains ready and you know what, maybe shows potential. Again, we're seeing that range here, right? Where Kit can predict how ready somebody is to donate and we give you a range to work with. So you can choose how flexible you want to be with that opportunity range. So I'm going to click ready and shows potential. Awesome. Let's go ahead and filter that out. Okay. Awesome. 307 contacts. That looks good. Perfect. All right, I might wanna break this down a little bit more. I can see we're down to 300, but if we wanna go even further, let's say I only wanna make sure that people who are in this list have given a large gift in the past, all right? Because again, what Kit's gonna do is it's gonna pull everyone who sort of might reflect some of the indicators of a major donor. So even if they have donated less in the past, if they meet a lot of the indicators, they could still be getting pulled into this list, right? Which is good, we like those opportunities, but in this case, I wanna be a little bit more strategic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a badge filter. Now, every contact has a badge on their profile. One of those badges is donor size. So I can see someone who's given like medium amount or a large amount. That's where we set that up in those organizations which we, organization settings, which we saw earlier. So I'm gonna make sure that they have a badge that contains any of donor size large. So I wanna make sure they gave a large amount in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter. Okay, 28 contacts. I can work with this. This looks good. Now, one other thing that might be helpful for your organization is adjusting your columns. So what you can do is adjust what you're seeing here under columns so you can pull relevant information. So some things that might be helpful when you're building a major donor prospect list are best way to reach out. You could pull potential major donor score, which I'll explain in a moment, and average donation amount. These are some things that might help you. So I'll go ahead and pull those columns. So now what I can see is best way to reach out. So phone, mail, email, et cetera. I can also see potential major donor score. So this is pretty cool. So what this does is it ranks major donor potential from zero to a hundred. So because we pulled people with very high potential to become a major donor, we're gonna see higher numbers here, but you can actually rank them. So if you click sort, you can actually sort out from like the highest to lowest. So you can see out of that list that you've created of your 28 contacts, who has the most potential to the least potential. And another thing I pulled in um, was average donation amount as well. So that way you can kind of gauge how much um, they tend to give. So when you reach out for an ask, uh, it can be a bit more personalized. So then what you wanna do is export this list. Now you can export it with useful information. So of course we're gonna want the donor's full name. Um, we're probably gonna want some contact information like email, phone, address, depending on how you plan on soliciting them. But then we can export some additional information, right? So if we wanted that score that we had, uh, potential major donor score, maybe we wanna see that in an Excel sheet when we're doing some analysis, right? And maybe we wanna pull that average donation and best way to reach out, okay? So you can actually export these fields as well. So then when you're getting ready to solicit, you have that available to you. So again, you just press next and go on and export and then you are ready to solicit. Now, one next thing I can show you is if you wanna track sort of where you're headed in terms of major donors, how successful these campaigns are. Under KPIs, I have a few camp, uh, KPIs to suggest to you. So if we go ahead and do add KPIs, um, a few things that might be helpful is if we scroll down, donor lifetime value is really great. The more major donors you have, um, the higher your donor lifetime value will be. Um, so that can be um, an interesting one to look at. Another one is under fundraising. If I scroll down, um, rate of total donations received from major gifts. That's another one you can look at to sort of gauge how successful you are in your campaigning. 
All right, well, that about covers how you can use Kit to identify major donor prospects. As always, if you have any questions or need any support building out your list, our support team is just an email away. See you next time.